perspective now from two Republicans, CNN political commentator Scott Jennings, a former special assistant to President George W. Bush, and former Congresswoman Barbara Comstock of Virginia. Congresswoman Comstock, I'm wondering what you make of this, this new reporting. Well, I think the American people should thank Vice President uh, Dan Quayle, first of all. That was solid and good advice. None of this information is too surprising. What is happening now with these books and what will happen with the January 6th committee and the subpoenas and the texts and the emails that come from all of these people close to the president, we are going to see it in a lot more detail. And unfortunately, as we get more detail, it is going to look even more awful for Donald Trump, because every time you think you're in the basement of awfulness with Donald Trump, there's another basement below it. Hmm. But the great news, and I think that is coming out in these books and will come out in the hearings also, is that you had Republican officials, even within his own White House, certainly within his administration, who said no to him. And you also had officials in Arizona and Georgia and other states who also said no and unfortunately are paying political consequences, but I think history will reward them. And a party that keeps trying to hitch itself to this sore loser who's a dangerous but a very diminished and unpopular politician is going to be a losing party. Scott, I mean, do you believe General Milley did the right thing? Well, I think he probably would say he did the only thing he could do, uh, which is try to keep things on the rails, uh, you know, long enough for a new president to take over. And although, as you know, Anderson, I've been quite critical of what Donald Trump did in the aftermath of January 6th and in the events leading up to January 6th, I'm very concerned about the prospect of our military leaders, in this case, our top military commander, essentially going around the president, going over the president, having secret meetings inside the government, uh, according to some reporting uh, in this book, maybe even calling uh, China, which is our adversary, and having uh, uh, conversations with his counterpart over there. To me, uh, as, as, as concerned as I am about a commander-in-chief being off the rails, I'm also concerned about our unelected military leaders uh, doing things that are not in the character of a civilian-run military. So this entire episode, to me, is extraordinarily concerning. And I actually think General Milley has some questions to answer about what he did. To me, if he was that concerned, Anderson, he should have gone public. Uh, instead, he kept all of his concerns private and did things privately. And although some will applaud him, I think we have to have a public accounting of this. That's interesting, Scott. I mean, you, you think it would have been better for him to publicly come out and, and say something about his concerns about the president as opposed to talking to generals and, as you said, you know, uh, whatever the details of, of his conversation with, with China, if there was, was one? Yeah, I, I think that it's obvious that he had extreme concerns. I mean, he said, according to the book, he thought the president was in mental decline. He had concerns about the president's decision-making capacity. And although I'm certain there are legal steps that he took inside of his position uh, that were appropriate, I, I do think if you have the top military commander in the country uh, with these concerns, enough of a concern to call these extraordinary meetings and maybe even contact foreign countries, I, I do believe public knowledge of that would have been warranted at the time, and I certainly think now public knowledge of it is, is warranted, and we really need an accounting of how all that went down. Maybe there's more uh, to learn in the book when it comes out, but yeah. it, it's all very troubling that you had both the civilian military leader and the top military leader uh, doing things that, that were really not in the character of our normal chain of command. Congresswoman, what do you think? Well, I think what he was doing was saying there is a proper procedure if any of these actions are taken, and he was certainly alerting all of the people to that. You had people in the same time frame who were going to senators, who were going to members of Congress, and saying the same type of things. Remember, some of his cabinet quit the day after. There were people calling for the 25th Amendment to be invoked. I was. I know um, Adam Kinzinger and others were saying we need to have the 25th Amendment. So what was said by General Milley and, and others is not something that wasn't said by many Republicans. And that's what I mean when I say, as this comes out, you're going to see there were lots of people, both within the White House and elsewhere. And thank you to General Milley for using the procedures. I think all he was doing, and I think this is what will come out, and sure, he can testify and talk about it, as should uh, General Kellogg and many others who were there with the president that day. But what he was doing was saying, this is an unstable person we're dealing with. I can assure you that was said by lots of Republican members of Congress. 
And we need to make sure that all of the processes that are in place are taken if he tries to do something, anything untoward, because this was an unstable person who we know was, was calling up people. And I think one of the voices you haven't heard from that I think we really need to hear from is his counsel's office, his chief counsel. All of these calls that were being made, um, you know, that the president himself made, they were made because his own counsel said you shouldn't do this, according to reports, because he knew if he did the kind of things that Trump did, he might be up for disbarment. Hmm. So I think you yeah. need to hear from all of the people around the president who told him to stop doing many of the things he was doing. And they did, you know, they ignored his commands, too, because they were unconstitutional and they were not things, uh, you know, whether they were um, amoral, immoral, unconstitutional, they were things that many of the people, including his own family, I mean, look, the reporting is that Ivanka and Jared didn't want to have anything to do with it. Well, if they didn't want to have anything to do with the president, they shouldn't have been in there as family members and also pretending to be staff. When it came down to it, they didn't want to talk to dear old dad and tell him what he should do. So all of these people should be out there with the public accounting. But I, th I thank General Milley. I thank all of the people who stopped this president from his unconstitutional actions. And we need, that's why this January 6th commission is going to be so important. And God bless all the Republicans who are out there fighting for it. Yeah. Congresswoman Comstock, I appreciate it. Scott Jennings as well. Thank you very much.